Hello, it's Laura Dovalo here with another interactive card tutorial. Today we're going to make a slimline interactive Christmas faux light up card. When we pull on the pull tab, the houses and stars light up without any LED lights or cables. We're of course playing with the contrast between the dark blue and white cardstock. Okay, let's get to it. Let's start with our main panel. I use the Starry Night Horizontal Dynamics to cut my stars, but you could of course use any similar die with stars or even polka dots. If you don't have those types of dies, then you could use a long reach hole punch to create your own stars. Don't place the die too high up. We need at least half an inch of space for the semicircular notch on the upper edge of the panel. And now let's tape it to the cardstock so that it doesn't move while in the die cutting machine. Carefully peel off the tape and if the stars are stuck in there, go ahead and remove them with a needle or the tip of your tweezers. Next, we need to plan the placement of the rest of the elements. I'm using the rectangular die with faux stitching from the slimline starter dynamics and the cute houses from the tiny houses dynamics. The large star is from the LLD bundle of baby clothes dynamics. We need to place the small house so that the base of it will be covered by the same snow slope as the big house. A last minute adjustment of the large star and now we can run this through our die cutting machine. Okay, now carefully peel off the tape and all of the dies. We wouldn't want to mess up our panel after all that planning. I also like to file the edges of the panel with a nail file to get rid of any paper burr. Now let's grab a T ruler and draw a line in the center of the upper edge. My panel is three and a quarter inches wide, so the center is at one and five eighths. You could run your panel through the die cutting machine once more with a one inch circle die, but it's just faster for me to use a hole punch. Okay, here I'm using a couple of the dies from the stitched Slimline Snow Drifts Dynamics to die cut my snowy hills. I've chosen tropical teal and blue raspberry because in my mind that's the color of snow at night. After die cutting the curved shapes, we will use the rectangular slimline die to add the faux stitching to the edges. Be careful so that you don't cut off too much of the darker panel. We want the bases of the houses to be slightly covered. On the other hand, you can make the lighter panel as tall as you like. Mine are four and one eighth of an inch and three and five eighths of an inch tall. Off camera, I cut a piece of acetate to three and one eighth by seven and five eighths of an inch. I then added strips of score tape to the edges as well as to the back of my panel. If you choose to create a similar card to this one with only stars, you don't need to add any acetate. Here we need it so that we can adhere the houses to it. Now for the fun part, inlaying all of the die cut elements in their places. I chose craft cardstock for the houses and electric red for the roofs and doors. I backed it with score tape before die cutting so that it would be easier to adhere to the acetate. The trees are from two different die sets, the snowy scene builder and snowy hillside, because the ones in the tiny houses dynamics were a little bit too big for this card. I die cut them out of jelly bean and gumdrop green cardstock. We don't have a lot of room for foam tape on our panel, so I'm cutting this scotch tape into thin strips. They are about 3 sixteenths of an inch or 7 millimeters wide. If you find this difficult, you could just use your paper trimmer to cut thin strips out of cardstock and layer three or four of them to create your own dimensional adhesive. Here I'm adhering the strips to the back of my panel as carefully and as straight as possible. For the lower edge we can use a regular piece of foam tape, but I'm not going to adhere it yet. 
First we need to add some score tape there so that we can adhere a strip of cellophane which will act as our stop mechanism. Now I'm measuring the space between the strips of foam tape to find out the size of my pull tab. Mine is going to be two and three quarters of an inches wide. I suggest that you do the same even if you are following this tutorial. We want it to be snug but not too tight so that it can slide perfectly. I'm starting off with a piece of cellophane that's about two and one eighth of an inches wide and maybe five and a half long, but I'm gonna trim it in a moment. Okay, I've exposed the stickiness and I'm just laying it down as straight as possible. And now I can trim this piece that is hanging off the edge. Next, we can add the foam tape on top of it. I did some previous calculations for my provisional pull tab, but as you can see, it's a smidge too long. So I'm going to trim it and then measure it. The final measurement is two and three quarters by seven and a half. Before we move on, we need to insert some stars near the edges because those are not going to light up with our mechanism. So that it won't look weird, I'll also add a couple of stars in the center of the panel. I die cut them out of smooth white cardstock backed with score tape. I mentioned before that this was my provisional pull tab, and that's because it's missing the key elements. Part of it needs to be the same color of cardstock as the sky, which is called after midnight, and the rest needs to be white or a pale yellow. But I want the pull tab to be smooth, so I'm going to add two pieces of cardstock to it. Here I'm measuring how long they need to be. The pull tab is going to be blue from the upper edge to a little under the lowest window of the houses, so three and three quarters or 9.5 centimeters. And now I'm going to draw a line there, turn the pull tab 180 degrees and measure the rest of it. The white strip needs to be three and 11 sixteenths of an inches long or 9.3 centimeters. I added score tape all over this pull tab and now I'm carefully adhering the pieces that I cut. If your panel is backed with acetate, you could absolutely get away with adding just the blue piece because the edge won't catch on any of the holes in the panel. But I'm doing it just in case and so that you will know what to do if you make adjustments to the design. Okay, let's try it out and check out the effect before we move on. This is looking good. An important note, if you want to heat emboss an arrow or the word pull on the pull tab, now would be the perfect moment. You could use a pencil to mark the spot and then stamp. I prefer to use an enamel arrow because it makes it easier to slide the pull tab and you don't need to cut notches in your card base. Next, I'm adding some score tape to the lower edge of the pull tab. We're going to adhere the other edge of the cellophane strip to this, so we need to figure out exactly where we want it to stop. We don't want any of the white showing through that semicircular notch, so here would be the perfect spot. I'm holding it with my fingers so that it won't move, and now I can peel off the backing of the score tape and adhere the cellophane to it. Let's get rid of that extra piece and we're done with this part. My card base of blue raspberry cardstock measures seven by eight and a half inches, scored at three and a half. Before adhering the panel to it, I'm using a dark blue Copic marker to quickly color the edge of the foam tape. As you can see, it's the only coloring that I did today. I'm so sorry, but I forgot to turn my camera on when I was adhering the panel to the card base. I pulled out the pull tab to its maximum position and adhered it with some washi tape to that notch so that it wouldn't get in the way. And then I did like I always do, peel off the backing in two opposite corners and only press down and peel off the rest when my panel is as straight as possible more or less like what I'm doing with my snow slopes. I left the upper edge of both of them without tape so that I could stick the trees underneath them. And I finally chose this pretty merry and bright sentiment which goes perfectly with the theme and heat embossed it in white on my upper slope panel. 
As a final touch, I added some crystal drops around it. So it's a wrap for my full light up card tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and if you have any questions just leave me a comment. As always you'll find all of the information about this card in the description box below. Bye bye, hasta la próxima amigos!